only way to start this broadcast is to ask what the hell just happened. Did you see the Washington Post article that just came out? It demolishes Biden. It demolishes his administration and out of left field drops bombshell after bombshell that you have to see to believe. So strong is their opinion that they come out and declare that he should never run again. And if you think they skip over Kamala Harris, not even close. An article that every American should read, but we're going to cover it all for you today. And exactly why we make the beginning statement, what the hell just happened? But now before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure you do that today. Make sure you help me share the video. Your comments always appreciated. Put up a membership platform here. One means of supporting me, if you can find it in your heart, to join as a member or simply go to restrictedrepublic.com. Remember that discount code expiring shortly, two for free. The number two, F-O-R-F-R-E-E -E at monthly checkout. Get you two months free plus 14 bonus days. Check out the work we're doing over there. So many thousands have now joined us because they realized what news was meant to sound like. No commercials, no interruptions, restrictedrepublic.com. And now let's get back to this broadcast. So here is the Washington Post article, an editorial piece titled, For the Good of the Country, Biden and Harris Should Bow Out of the 2024 Election. My friends, it is officially game over for the administration when they have one of their own publications, one of their strong supporters, turn their back on both of them. It starts here. During this autumn's avalanche of political news, an enormous boulder bounced by, barely noticed. It demonstrated why Joe Biden should not seek another term. Democrats should promptly face that fact. And this one. An Everest of evidence showing that Vice President Harris is starkly unqualified to be considered as his successor. They're pulling no punches. They went right for the jugular to demolish the administration entirely. Well, they're focusing on one of the many continual, ongoing, daily mistakes that Biden makes. This on reason. Biden mistakenly imagines that Congress approved his student debt cancellation scheme. As a matter of fact, the Washington Post goes into great detail on this. The Boulder. Meeting recently with some progressive activists, Biden said his $426 billion student loan forgiveness was accomplished by, in quotes, a law that he just signed. I got it passed by a vote or two. No, he did not. Again, the Washington Post shockingly pulling no punches. What vote? Who voted, they ask? After repeated unilateral extensions of the moratorium, now they go for the jugular again, on loan repayments until election season, Biden unilaterally implemented the windfall for millions of voters. Congress was not involved in this cataract of money from the Treasury in violation of the Constitution's Appropriations Clause. When have you ever seen this? Biden was, of course, citing this Higher Education Relief Opportunity for Students Act of 2003. COVID went ahead and extended that. But once Biden admits on 60 Minutes that the pandemic is over, well, then it would fall into the Appropriations Clause, by which Biden violated. And the Washington Post calling him out on that. It is frightening, they continue that Biden does not know or remember what he recently did regarding an immensely important policy. He must be presumed susceptible to future episodes of similar bewilderment. He should leave the public stage on January 20th of 2025. The Washington Post thinking so little of him that at, after this point in the article, they even stopped discussing him. Case closed for them. He should leave the public stage on January 20th, 2025. So now they turn their focus on Kamala Harris. So should his vice president, Thomas R. Marshall, Woodrow Wilson's vice president joke. Once there were two brothers. One ran away to the sea. The other was elected vice president of the United States. And, and nothing was heard of either of them again. Kamala Harris, however, has been heard from sufficiently. Transcripts of her verbal meanderings cannot convey their eerie strangeness. Videos of them should be watched. Oh, I'll let you watch what they reference because they go one by one by one. I'm doing a tour of the library here. 
and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. The Washington Post calling out to their own constituents. I know it sounds strange to say constituents, but they're such a politically one-sided publication that, well, they're speaking right to the voters of the other side and calling out their leaders in chief directly with links and examples of why they should never run for office again. It goes on. What most excited her about the Inflation Reduction Act? And they give the example. What are some parts of the Inflation Reduction Act, this, this amazing new law that you are most excited about? One of the things that I'm very excited about is what we have been doing in terms of electric vehicles. And I have a particular fondness, I must tell you, for electric school buses. I love electric school buses. <laughs> oh, that's right. Out of the entire Inflation Reduction Act, the Washington Post saying all she could come up with was electric school buses is what excites her. But they continue on their demolition. That is especially true when it comes to the climate crisis, which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on. Wow, you can't run from that reality, can you? But the Washington Post isn't nearly complete. I am here standing here on the northern flank, on the eastern flank. So you think they're done? Oh no. They go on to Harris on space, Harris on abortion, Harris on equity, and Harris on the border. I'll play them back to back for you. Space is exciting. It spurs our imaginations and it forces us to ask big questions. Space, it affects us all and it connects us all. When you look back, did Democrats fail past Democratic presidents, congressional leaders to not codify Roe v. Wade over the past five decades? I think that, to be very honest with you, I, I do believe that we should have rightly believed, but we certainly believe that certain issues are just settled. Certain issues are just settled. Clearly we're not. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. The problem with that, not everybody's starting out from the same place. It's about giving people the resources and the support they need so that everyone can be on equal footing and then compete on equal footing. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place. The Washington Post taking direct aim at every Democrats talking points. But that equity one has always resonated with so many people in the wrong way. Andrew Sullivan. Equitable treatment means we all end up in the same place as Kamala Harris stated in that video. That's equality of outcomes enforced by the government. And that used to be called communism. And so many taking aim at her, but it didn't stop there. We have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure. We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. Now to anybody remotely paying attention, you know, of course, how laughable that statement is. It goes on. They cite this tweet. I don't know how many times I've said this, but every policy answer from Kamala Harris sounds like someone delivering a book report on a book they haven't read. I've never seen the Washington Post take such direct aim at the Democrats. Enough, the Washington Post declares, citing that tweet I just showed you. Her style betrays a self-satisfied exaggeration of her aptitudes. Lacking natural talent, she needs to prepare, but evidently doesn't. Complacency and arrogance makes a ruinous compound. <laughs> I told you guys, you would love this. 
Regarding Biden and Harris now, they start to wrap up their destruction of Biden administration. Regarding Biden and Harris, the National Democratic Party faces two tests of stewardship. Its imprimatur cannot again be bestowed on either of them. Biden is not just past his prime, even adequacy is in his past. And this is Harris's prime. So Democrats, you can no longer sanction these two. It's from the Washington Post. You'd figure this was coming from a conservative media outlet, but no. They wrap this up by stating, in 2024, the Republican Party might present the nation with the presidential nominee whose unfitness has been demonstrated. After next Tuesday's sobering election results, Democrats should resolve not to insult and imperil the nation by doing the same. So obviously a shot at Trump, but what's most important is the Washington Post allows an article to come out to their Democrat base that goes and ends by saying, do not allow Biden and Harris to have any part in this country ever again. Or as they titled it, for the good of the country, Biden and Harris should bow out of the 2024 election. Brought to you by none other than the Washington Post. And after Biden's rant about the elections yesterday, claiming on one hand that no one should interfere, but yet doing a very steady job to attempt to, well, sway it himself. And how that's allowed, the hypocrisy of the very two statements themselves will always be befuddling to me, but we should expect nothing else from this administration. And the Washington Post now declares they expect nothing else from this administration. Game over. The fat lady singing when you have a completely liberal publication coming out and saying, look, folks, we're done here. We're done. It's the end. I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless Justice Knight. Signing out. <laughs>